Hi, welcome to this latest episode of the Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about Mac masquerading. And I addressed this a little bit in the ARP video, uh, but I wanted to dig into Mac masquerade itself a little bit more. So what Mac masquerade allows you to do is if you have, um, you know, a switch, say here, and these are connected, and then maybe you have a, you know, router uh, pair that are connected, going out to whatever they're doing, and then you have your uh, big IPs connecting into these switches. And say you have a hardware connection between these big IPs, and then you have, um, and that's just a voltage, and, and then you've got your, you know, your HA connections on, on network as well, but then you're also connected this way via network. You have multiple ways for these to be you know, active standby. And so if we say that this guy is your active big IP and this is your standby big IP, at the point where this big IP fails, if you have Mac Masquerade configured, the Mac address that this big IP uh, was uh, using for egress traffic into these switches will then be uh, arped gratuitously uh, from this guy. So this guy, when this fails, we're going to get a um, gratuitous arp up to this switch. So in the MAC address tables of these switches, originally the switch had that belonging, um, I'm sorry, on the active one, he had uh, that that uh, MAC address known to be here. So the MAC address table uh, will point to this port for that MAC address. When the big IP sends a gratuitous ARP, the switch here updates his table and notifies and, and, uh, and then this is pulled out of the table. So this router knows to now, instead of sending traffic down this way, sends it to this switch. And of course, this switch has already updated his table and it comes back down that way. So that's how Mac Masquerade works. Um, you have a shared unique address for these two big IPs so that when there is a failure, um, it's seamless. You know, there, there doesn't need to be a rediscovery of that address uh, in, in the system. And, and we're just gonna, the switching network will move the location of that same Mac address from here over to this port and then everything should continue to work. So these routers don't need a new address for this big IP. It just continues to use the same address and the switching infrastructure in between salts. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was um, the big IPs use that for uh, traffic group, associated traffic. It doesn't affect monitoring. Monitoring is going to use the, the normal standard address for that. And if you're on a, um, if these big IPs are on, say, something like, uh, let's say it's on uh, VMware uh, ESX or ESXi. Um, if it's on a system like these and these are virtualized, then gratuitous ARPs is not something that the underlying host will allow by default. You need to be able to um, uh, enable forge transmits and promiscuous mode. That needs to be con uh, configured to accept in order for those gratuitous ARPs to be honored um, and for Mac Masquerade to work. And so uh, how do you choose, how do you choose a, a MAC address for your Mac Masquerading? And so I wanted to maybe set up a little, a little table here. And so let's assume we have a uh, MAC address, let's see, 01, 02, 03. In Knowledge Base Article K3523, uh, what, what they recommend is to update this first byte by changing the second bit. So in this case, we have 00. zero. So if we take that out to all eight bits, it's suggesting you change the second bit. So that would become a one in this scenario. Oh, do I have enough? One, two, three, four. Oh, let's go that way. All right. So. Then in this, if I'm going to convert that to hex, this would be zero and that would be two. So this address would change then 
from 0, 0 to 0, 2. And then all the rest of this would remain. One of the recommendations uh, from some of our FSEs is that, well, you know, that changes the, the vendor ID of, uh, of the, the first three octets. And so some of the tools that recognize uh, what vendor that Mac is, then that stops to work. And so, um, you know, totally possible you can do it, it'll work, but some of the analysis that you might do from those will change. And so another recommendation is to, instead of changing these first three, uh, go ahead and, and maybe look at this fourth octet instead. And so the recommendation there, of course, uh, because it's F5, maybe just change this original one from this address. We'll keep the original MAC address and then we'll just change this to F5. And then you have these additional uh, octets. And what do you do with these additional octets? And one of the recommendations there is that you could set this to your um, traffic, or I'm sorry, your device group ID and your traffic group ID. And so, you know, that's very scalable in that you have uh, 255 traffic groups per um, each of your 255 device groups doing that. And so, you know, that, that's very scalable. And when your um, operators are troubleshooting, they can very quickly identify patterns of where this traffic belongs and, and, and uh, what devices, what device groups and what traffic groups they need to isolate their troubleshooting to. So that, that's a good way to, to manage that. And then we have another, another um, situation to where uh, you can set up per VLAN Mac Masquerade. And so there's a, there's a database key, uh, tm.macmaskadder underscore per underscore VLAN. If you set that to true and you set up a base MAC adder, so let's use this same address we're using up here. If we have 0001 D7 01 what we would do is, is uh, let's maybe adopt this F5 for this. We'll keep the first three octets the same. And then what you do in the configuration for the traffic group is you set this, and then let's say you set that to 0, 0. And, and if you set the base MAC address in the traffic group with these last four to 0, what the system will do for each VLAN is it'll take those last two octets and convert the VLAN address to that. So if we have a VLAN address of 80, I'm sorry, 580, so if the VLAN tag is 580, in hex, that is um, equals hex 0244. And what it'll do is it'll reverse those two octets. And so this becomes 4402 in this address. So if we had a different VLAN, say if we had VLAN 20, well, that's hex uh, 14, right? Check my, my hex math there. Yeah, that'd be hex 14. And so that would be 1400 as the last. So it's going to do that for every VLAN within that traffic group on this base MAC address. So uh, that's, uh, that's MAC masquerading in a nutshell and the different ways that you can kind of approach setting that address. This is done for you based on a um, per VLAN MAC masquerading. And then, you know, you can kind of set your own to have unique identifiers for troubleshooting purposes, or you can just set it to whatever you want to set it and, and forget it. So hopefully this has been helpful. We will see you out there in the community. Thanks for joining us.